friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. In today's video, we're gonna be playing with the new ColourPop and Nightmare Before Christmas collaboration collection. I'm really excited that they sent this to me because I love Nightmare Before Christmas so much. Our bedroom downstairs is kind of Tim Burton themed with lots of Nightmare Before Christmas-esque things. I have literally all of the Nightmare Before Christmas Squishmallows that are gonna live on my bed permanently. We're gonna be doing a whole Nightmare Before Christmas, Halloween Christmas extravaganza in our bedroom during like the holiday season for Christmas time. I'm so excited. There are some things I'm disappointed at with this collection, but I do just love the packaging. I'm happy that this exists and I'm excited to show you everything and dive in. In this video, I'll be doing swatches and close-ups of all the products and I'm creating the look you see right here. I used so many of the products today to get a good feel for everything. So I have some thoughts at the end of the video. Obviously, of course, this is only a first impression. It's my first time only using these particular products, but I am pretty familiar with ColourPop's products in general. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get into it all today, folks. By the time this video goes up, the collection will have already launched yesterday. So hopefully a good amount of this is still in stock. Who even knows, sometimes these ColourPop collections last a while. Sometimes they sell out instantaneously. I'm sorry I can't get it up the day it launches, but I do have to work and I can only do so much in so little time. This just got delivered to me last night once I got off of work, so yeah. I'm doing what I can for you. Before we get into it though, let me just give you my details. I believe I got this choker from Shop Sun & Co. You can use my affiliate code BattyBean to save 10%. My plugs today are Love Kills Boutique and these earrings were a gift, so I'm not sure where they're from, but they kind of reminded me of when Jack like cuts out a spider web snowflake. That's what it reminded me of. I know I'm going to get asked about this shirt. It is from T Public. I recommend only buying from T Public when they're having a sale because they have $13 shirt sales all the time. <laughs> Anyways, without further ado, let's just hop in, chat about the products, and then we will get into the tutorial. First things first, look how cute the package is that the products came in. It was inside out, but I inside outed it so I could use it as just a cute Nightmare Before Christmas box to hold things. I love this. So first things first, we have a sponge with zero on it. I did use it today and it's nice. It's just a big fat sponge. I do prefer microfiber sponges generally, but this one is pretty nice. They also sent over this pack of little face crystals, which are very cute. I like the colors. I like that there's lots of purples and just iridescent ones. Do they scream Nightmare Before Christmas? Not necessarily, but I do still think they're fun and cute. Oh, let's see. I don't even know where to start. Let's start with lip products because there are a lot of like eye products. So we have three lipsticks. The packaging is so cute. I really enjoy ColourPop's Lux Lipstick Formula. It's very creamy and very comfortable. We have the shades Jack Skellington, Oogie Boogie, and Sally. Jack Skellington is a bright red, Oogie Boogie is a neutral, and Sally is a pink. I feel like these are all very safe choices for lipsticks, but I'm not mad at them. They do kind of make sense. Jack wearing the red kind of represents the Sandy Claus outfit. Sally does have a lot of pink in her attire. And Oogie Boogie, I feel like it could have been a green, but I get why they would wouldn't do a green lipstick. And I mean, the neutral does make sense because he is naturally just a burlapy kind of color uh, and he only glows green in the dark, but yeah. I'm not mad at these colors. I'm glad they're not all neutrals. Like I'm glad there are some pops of color in there and they do kind of make sense. Side note, all of the lipsticks specifically come in these little like ornament containers and I'm 100% keeping these containers to use as ornaments because like I said, we're doing kind of a Nightmare Before Christmas, Tim Burton-y spooky Christmas tree in our bedroom this year. So these are gonna be perfect. I don't know if they will last years since they are made of paper, but they will be cute for this year. We got a glitterly obsessed glitter in the shade Master of Fright. It's very cute. It's very sparkly, just different shades of purples and iridescent tones. It's very cute. Again, I don't know if it screams Nightmare Before Christmas, but it is really cute and I do enjoy the glitterly obsessed. These aren't meant to be used around the eye area. They're meant to be used on your face or like in your hair or things like that. I do tend to use them on my eye because I'm a rebel, but you are not supposed to, just so you're aware. There's a duo of BFF eyeliners. We have Pumpkin King and Scream Queen. Pumpkin King is a white and Scream Queen is a black. That's a tongue twister and hard to say all at the same time. I actually needed a black eyeliner, so this is perfect timing. White eyeliners in the past don't usually work for me like in felt tip form. They usually just kind of melt in with whatever eyeshadow I have going on, but I imagine by itself, if you don't have a bunch of colorful eyeshadow on, it'll probably stay really true and bright. We got a trio of Jelly Mutt shadows, which is actually really exciting to me because I haven't seen these in a very long time. We have the shades Lock, Shock, and Barrel. The packaging is so cute. I can't take it. Lock is a beautiful, deep, kind of purpley blue blackish duochrome. It's so pretty. Shock is a very bright pink with a little bit of a purple flip, but mostly just bright pink. And Barrel is a really pretty kind of 
neutral with a strong minty turquoisey green shift. It's really, really pretty. And finally, last but not least, we have the palette itself, the Nightmare Before Christmas palette. We have 12 shades. We have a mixture of mattes, shimmers, and two sequin shadows. I'm thrilled that there's a vampire teddy in the shadow and there's a vampire teddy on the mirror itself. It's hard to show you from far away. While I do enjoy the color story itself, it doesn't really scream Nightmare Before Christmas for me, and I know a lot of people felt the same way. I feel like they definitely missed an opportunity to have a really pretty green in here. There is technically an orange in the palette, but I feel like a green especially would have fit really nicely in here. There's some things they could have done to make this a little bit more Nightmare Before Christmassy, but I do still quite enjoy this color story. I cannot lie, I think it's really pretty. I like the different shades of shimmers in here and I like all the bright mattes. I'm really thankful that they didn't include like their typical light beigey shades that they have in almost every palette. This one definitely does get very deep. It can be very colorful. This is a really fun color story and I'm excited about it. Even though I feel like it could have been pushed a little more Nightmare Before Christmassy, I do enjoy it. And there's also little bats and snowflakes all over it. It's so cute. So yeah, that's the collection. Um, I hope that was helpful if you needed to see swatches or things up close. There it is all laid out for you. But now let's just hop in and actually create this look. I love how this came out. I keep staring at my eyes in the mirror because I think it's so pretty. Let's get into it and I'll give you my thoughts on everything at the end. Hi, hello. Let's play with this collection. Um, today's actually Thursday the 28th. It's launching today. I'm not gonna be able to get the video up today in time, but it is going up tomorrow. So hello from the present. I hope you're doing well. So many of my videos have been pre-filmed lately, so it's nice to be talking to you in real time. So I've already done my base. I did use the sponge for my concealer and foundation and cream bronzer, and it worked really nicely. It's just very big and bouncy, and I liked it. It was nice. And then for blush and highlight, I actually used shades from the palette. I used Sandy Claws as my blush, and I used Zero as my highlight, and I kind of really like zero as a highlight it's really glossy and pretty but now we are going to get into the eyes i'm going to go ahead and prime with the translucent party proof primer from ColourPop. figure we just stick with the ColourPop theme today i have been really really enjoying this primer though it's very pillowy and cushiony and it blends out really nice there's a couple different shades of this I use the translucent one, but I really like it. I have been liking the Milk Hydro Grip Eye Primer more, but this is probably a close second. Probably my favorite affordable eye primer, honestly. So I'm gonna play with some of the palette, some of the jelly shadows, and the glitter. I'm gonna try to use a little of everything. I wanna start first with In My Bones. I'm just gonna take that on this little e.l.f. tapered blending brush, and I'm gonna focus this kind of in the outer corner. I'll take it through the crease just about halfway, but I want to leave room for other shades that I'm going to lay down. I do want this look to be fairly winged out as well. I'm going to do a little smoking on that lower lash line, about all the way across, honestly. Kind of sort of something like that. So next I want to start blending it out with Everybody's Scream. I'm going to take that on kind of this longer pencil brush from Odin's Eye. It's an FR2. And I'm basically just going to kind of start in the front part of my crease just to create that little bit of color. And then I'm gonna very lightly just start running this along the edges of that gray that I laid down. I'll do kind of the same thing to the lower lash line. I'm using very little pressure. I'm holding the end of my brush so that I'm not going too hard. I very much want a gradient of like gray to pink for this. Kinda like that. Still keeping with my winged effect, but just adding a little halo of pink throughout. So now that that is kind of laid down and started blending, I do want to blend it even more with Sandy Claws. I'm gonna take this larger brush from MOTD Cosmetics. It's the Seamless Sheer Blend. Just a big fat blending brush, and I'm kinda gonna do the same thing I just did with the previous shade, but I'm just gonna blend this a little more outwards, get it more blown outy. Same with down here, and especially focused in this outer part of my lower lash line, I really like a little extra emphasis in this area, especially because I did use this particular shade as my blush. I'm kind of cool if my like outer corner and cheek all kind of flow together. I think it looks really pretty. I'm really loving the vibe of this so far, especially with my cheek. I just think it's all melting together so beautifully. Next though, I wanna take Halloween Town, this sparkly black. And I wanna use that just to really press in this outer area and a little on my lower lash line to add even more depth. This is a pencil brush, it's a Spectrum A12. Ooh, there's a lot of dusty fallout on that shade. Be very careful unless you want it everywhere like I just did. <laughs> Again, I'm just kind of pressing it out here. Yeah, just as I suspected, the sparkle doesn't really stick around like at all, and I haven't even really started to blend yet, so I'm just pretending this is a matte black. And you know that works for me to just pretend that it's a matte black. And I'm only gonna tuck the black on the lower lash line just in the outer half, just to create some drama and depth out here. 
I love the way like a very black or just dark and smoky outer corner of the eye looks, especially when you take it down a little bit like that. I just think it's so sultry and cute. So next I'm gonna take Everybody's Scream, that kind of purpley pink shade, and I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I just wanna very lightly run this around the edges of that black that I just laid down, just to help get it nice and smoky. Ooh, yes. And again, taking a little bit more of Sandy Claws, I'm gonna do the same thing again, just putting a lot of focus around this outer lower area especially so it can all blend in with my cheek situation. I just love a smoky lower outer corner. I think it's so pretty and I think it makes your eyes look so big. I feel like when people do like how to make your eyes look big tricks, it's always just put a lot of white in the like waterline and make sure your lid's nice and white. But I feel like a huge trick is like really dragging down that outer corner of the lower lash line, at least on my eye shape. I Love it. All right, well that's it for the crease action and pretty much everything for the palette. The only other thing I'm gonna dip into the palette for is my inner corner shade. In the meantime though, we are gonna dip into one of the jelly shadows. We're gonna dip into the one called Lock. Looks like that. It's so beautiful. Just deep, duochrome, purpley, bluey, blacky goodness. So from what I understand, with the Jelly Mutt shadows, what works best is either using those disposable little eyeshadow spongy ones or like a silicone one. I don't have either of those, so I'm just gonna use a very small dense brush and hope for the best. This is from the Vintage Cosmetic Company. It came in a BoxyCharm 5,000 years ago. I have used these in the past, but it's been a very long time. I actually didn't even think they made these anymore, so I'm actually pretty shocked to see them in this collection. I don't know if maybe it's a resurgence or maybe I just didn't realize they still made them. Maybe they just lost popularity, but I'm, I'm pretty excited nonetheless. I'm gonna start by just putting this one in the outer half. Oh, I'm already dropping jelly everywhere. I do not wanna get this white shirt dirty. I'm gonna start by putting it just in the outer half because I might use one of the other shades in the front half. Oh yeah, I like that. I think I do actually just wanna keep that in the outer half. I think I might use a different shade for the inner part. I think that would be cute. I'm gonna use that little elf brush that I first applied the gray with just to make sure that there's no harsh lines around the outer part of this. And now I'm just kind of wiping this brush off on a towel because I do like this brush for applying it so far. So I want to use that for the other shade. Now part of me wants to use shock because the pink would go with this look very nicely, but I feel like that's easy because this collection is very pink heavy. Um, so I'm going to use barrel instead. Barrel is this really pretty kind of green flip. It's very cute. It's not super bright green. I wish there was a more obvious green in this collection, but I'll take what I can get. So I'm just gonna do the same thing, get some of that product loaded up, and that's gonna go in the front part of my eye. And now that it's applied, I'm just gonna kind of lightly tap where the dark and light meet. I love the combination of both of those on my lid. I feel like it looks like an oil slick or something. It's so pretty. I'm just gonna use my pink blending brush to help make sure there's no hard edge. Oh, that's so pretty. I will update in my upcoming new makeup releases PR roundup review if these lasted well or if they crease like crazy on me. So far everything's applying really nice, but I will update if creasing becomes an issue. I'm excited about these jelly shadows. I feel like I don't remember being that excited when they first came out. Maybe it just wasn't my type of product back then, but I'm really into this now. Please give me all the wet, shifty shadows. This is amazing. And I feel like that shade barrel really complements that purple jelly shadow as well really nicely. Okay, I'm really excited. So I'm gonna do my inner corner really quick before I play with the glitter. I'm just gonna take zero from the palette that I used on my face. I know that's the easy choice, but you know what? In this collection, it really is the best choice. All right, let's get on to the glitter. We are going to have Master of Frights. With glitters, especially these in particular, they are not intended for use around the eye area. So do as I say, not as I do. I'm gonna do it anyway, but you're not supposed to. I just used this very old Urban Decay brush that I don't care about getting dirty. This is always my dedicated glitter brush. Um, and I'm gonna push this right here in the front portion of my lower lash line, trying to be very careful not to get it actually in my eyeball. Just like that, just a little something. So now at this point, I'm going to put the glitter on the other eye, throw my lashes, eye pencil, one of the lipsticks. I might even play with the face jewels that came in the collection. If I do, I will obviously show you when I come back. I'm just unsure what I wanna use and where I wanna use it. I'll be back when I'm complete. All right, here's my completed look. I think this is so 
much fun and so pretty. Again, I just love that blown out lower lash line. It makes my heart skip a beat. <laughs> the eye pencil I ended up throwing in is called Cosmic Mission from Urban Decay. It's just kind of like a metallic muted purple and I thought it kind of went with that lower lash line a little bit. The lashes I'm wearing are Luna from Lunar Beauty and on my lips I ended up using two. So I kind of took the pink lipstick Sally and kind of put it in the outer corners of my lip and then I used Oogie Boogie everywhere else and just kind of blended it together just to give a little bit of a neutral pink ombre effect and I really like it. I think it's cute with this look. I almost did just Oogie Boogie but I thought someone would get mad at me for not using one of the bright colors so I figured I would do the best of both worlds. And then I did use some of the crystals. There's like no easy way to show this from far away. I basically took the two fattest purple ones on the lower part of both eyes and then I took the second biggest pink one right next to it on both sides and then I took the smallest of the kind of light pink one and I put it on the top and then I took the smallest of the regular pink one and put it here. I just kind of threw crystals all over my face and I really like it. But yeah, this is my look complete. I hope you love it as much as I do. I'm obsessed with it. It's so sparkly and rich and lovely and I'm excited to wear this all day. Let me zoom out and I will give you my thoughts so far on the collection. All right, did you enjoy my tutorial? I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun creating this look. Let me just give you the quick rundown on everything. Again, I do like the sponge. I prefer microfiber sponges, but I do like this one. It's very squishy and bouncy. It blended out my products nicely. I'll probably keep using this one for a while. There's not really much I can say about the face jewels other than they're cute. They don't like really serve too much of a purpose. They're not like a must have in my collection, but it's one of those things if it's around and I think about it, I'll use them but they aren't like a must have for me. I'm pretty happy with the lipsticks. Again, the colors aren't anything that revolutionary. They are things I have a hundred times over, but I'll probably keep them forever because the packaging is so cute. I love them so much and I do really like the shade of neutral that there is. Oogie Boogie is pretty cute. I just don't really reach for bright pink and bright red regular lipsticks too often. Usually if I'm gonna wear a bold color like that, it's in liquid lipstick form so it can stay a little more budge proof, but I do enjoy this formula, so I'm not I'm not angry about it at all. The Glitterly Obsessed is really cute. I, again, I don't use these all the time, but I do reach for them frequently enough. I do like reaching for these when I wanna use glitter. There's already kind of an adhesive built in since they're a glitter gel. Again, you're not supposed to use them on the eyes, but I do anyway. And again, I just love the packaging. I love seeing Jack's cute little face with all the snowflakes. It's adorable. The BFF Liner Duo isn't that exciting to me. Like the packaging's cute. I like seeing all the little skulls and bones in the shape of a snowflake. It's cute, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a black and white felt tip liner. It's not anything we haven't seen before, but they exist in this collection. The Jelly Much Shadows. Honestly, these might be my favorite part of the whole collection. I think they are so, so pretty. I do wish like maybe Shock especially was not a bright pink. Like this could have been a really cool green. Even if there wasn't a green in the palette, this could have been a really cool, just awesome, bright, oogie boogie green. I like that barrel does have a little bit of that green flip, but it's not green enough for me to think like, ah yes, that's a green shadow right there. But they are really pretty. Lock in particular, that dark purpley one, so gorgeous. Now as of right now, they're holding up really nicely. I'm about 25 minutes into wearing these and they still look just as fresh as when I put them on. Granted, that's not a very long time, but just to update, I'm not getting instant creasiness, but I will update later if I do get creasiness. And finally, we have the palette. The packaging is so cute. I just love seeing Zero's face. I love all the sparkles and the snowflakes and the bats. It's so cute. I love the look I created. I felt like everything blended out really nice. Again, I'm thrilled that it goes very deep. I'm thrilled that there aren't beiges in here. Again, could there have been a couple different color differences to make it more Nightmare Before Christmas? Absolutely, but again, I do like this color story standalone by itself. I think it's pretty. I like the different tones in here. It's very colorful and dark and I'm pretty pleased with it. My biggest gripe is I wish there was at least a one green in this collection. <laughs> I would have been a lot happier, but for the most part, I do like this collection. It fills my heart with some joy and I'm very happy that it exists. And I'm very thankful they sent it to me. I'm happy I got the opportunity to try everything and I'm happy that I have the cute packaging and I'm really excited to use these as ornaments. Honestly, that's also my favorite part. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed my video. I would love to hear your thoughts. Are you as huge of a Nightmare Before Christmas fan as I am? I watch it all the time. It's my go-to comfort movie. It's also my go-to decorating movie. When I'm decorating for both Halloween and Christmas, it is the first movie I put on the TV as background noise. Did you pick anything from this collection up? Do you wanna pick anything up? I would love to hear your thoughts down below. If you made it to the end of this video, leave me a Halloween-related emoji since we are in spooky season. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. And if you're not already, you can follow 
follow me on my other socials. You can join the Batty Bean fam. I'm Batty Bean on everything. I post every day on Instagram and I'm pretty active on TikTok and Twitter as well. And don't forget to subscribe if you are new to my channel. I've been posting every single day in the month of October. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.